right, first we're gonna talk about the instruments we're gonna to use to display this type of attack. As you can see over here, we have a blood gas machine. This takes samples of blood and looks at various characteristics of it for different variables that doctors are gonna care about. What are your red blood cells doing? What are your electrolytes doing? What's your sodium, what's your potassium? This device can take a small amount of blood and make results that doctors can act on. This is a urinalysis machine. It looks at urine for various characteristics, like is there the presence of an infection or not? These devices will run these different tests and then they'll take the results and they'll send them to the laboratory information system. This is a piece of software that takes the results from a patient's test, reconciles them with the order, what the doctor wanted, combines them, and sends them to the doctor for review. As you can see here, that is the next part of this and this is where our attack comes into place. Where our attack takes place is in the communication between the lab information system and the health information system. The attacking computer is going to perform what is called a man-in-the-middle attack. It will pretend to be the medical record system and tell the lab information system, hey, I'm over here, you can talk to me. The lab information system at this point is going to send all the patient results which it obtains from the blood gas machine to the attacking computer rather than the medical record system. At this point, the attacking computer is going to modify the results and make it look like a patient who is regularly healthy has DKA, or diabetic ketoacidosis. It will then take these results and send it to the medical record system. In the medical record system, the doctor will see lab values which do not cohere with the results reported by the lab information system. So once a doctor sits down and looks at these lab results, they're going to come to the conclusion that this patient has diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, DKA, or diabetic ketoacidosis, is a complication of diabetes where the blood sugar gets dangerously high and the body's pH becomes very acidic or low. The body can't exist in that condition for too long, so we need to treat this patient. To treat DKA, we need to give someone insulin. When a patient's blood sugar is really high and you give insulin, great. It lowers down to an acceptable level and the patient gets better. But if you give insulin to a patient whose blood sugar is normal, like in the case uh, of our patient here, their blood sugar becomes dangerously low. And then the brain and the heart and the rest of the organs don't have the nutrients they need to survive. The patient can get very sick and even die. This is just one example of an attack that can take place in hospital technology infrastructure. It really highlights the need for greater and better security practices when it comes to healthcare IT. It's no longer patient data that's at risk, but patients' lives as well.